I just want to take a moment. Can we appreciate all the school teachers back to school? Some of you are in the room, I know, but we're just so thankful for all this. Give a hand for school teachers. So appreciative. Uh, one, one a teacher in particular, I think, that deserves extra appreciation is the band teacher. <laughs> when I was in grade seven, I, I started taking an interest in music, and I joined the school band, West Kings High School, junior concert band, percussion. Mr. Hassel was our first band teacher, and then Mrs. Pelly, and I think we managed to drive them both to the brink of insanity. They were always looking just like we were destroying their lives. <laughs> you see, there's this thing that happens in the first five minutes of a concert band rehearsal. Before the teacher stands at the front and taps their baton on the music stand and gets everyone's attention, for that first five minutes, people are tuning their instruments, uh, warming up, and it's just chaos. It can only be described as utter calamity. Everybody starts playing, and random notes and percussionists start banging on stuff, and it gets louder and louder and louder and louder until you're about to lose your brain, and then the conductor comes and yells at everyone, give it a rest of it, and then they start, and the sweet relief of silence. And then we all get out our sheet music, turn to the same page, and we start playing Together, and what once was a room full of noise and chaos becomes a room filled with music. Well, this is a story about the church. This is a story about Christianity. Too often, to a listening world, Christianity sounds like noise. It can be distasteful. It can be unappealing. It can be annoying to a listening world. And it gets like that when we're not all playing from the same page. And that page that we all need to be playing from, the sheet music, that when we're all playing from it, it sounds like beautiful music to a listening world, is love. It is the love of Christ. This is pretty much what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13. Let me just read the first three verses of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. Paul says, if I could speak all the languages of the earth and of angels but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. I'd be a junior high concert band warming up before the thing starts. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. If we don't have love... If love is not the thing that we're all about as Christians, we might think we're accomplishing a lot of really great things for Jesus, but actually it might just be a whole lot of noise, a whole lot of racket, a clanging cymbal. So we at Emmanuel want to be a church that is united in love, that is driven by love, that is defined by love, known by our love. Love as the sheet music that we're all playing from together. So that's why our vision as a church is what it is. And it is to be a Jesus-centered community learning to love God, one another, and the world around us. Our marching orders from Jesus are to love God, to love each other, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. I'm a visual person, and uh, and so I I like so visual aid helps me remember things. So we have these arrows that kind of help us remind us of of this vision and and our and, and what we're talking about here. So. We're called to love God. That's sort of like love in in a vertical, up and down direction, our relationship with God. 
And then we're called to love one another. That's sort of inward, inward love within the church family. And we're also called to an outward love to the world around us. And those three really do sum up the commands of Jesus. In Matthew 22, Jesus was asked, what is the, you know, teacher, what is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus, if, if we were to take the whole Torah with its 600 and whatever commandments, what, what would you say is the most important one? And, you know, Jesus actually gives him an answer. He says, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. To love God. That's the first and greatest commandment. And then Jesus says the second is equally important. So I don't know if, it's the, if the first is the greatest or, and the second is the second greatest or if they're both equally important. Jesus says they're equally important. So I guess they're both equally important. And it's this, to love your neighbor as yourself. And he says the entire law, all of the Torah, and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. It's all about the vertical love relationships and the horizontal love relationships. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor. Jesus also says in in, uh, John 5, 12, this is my commandment. Love each other the same way I have loved you. In John 13, 34 and 35, so now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciple. Ah, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciple. Love God, love one another, love the world around us. So our aim at Emmanuel is to help you do that, (laughs) to provide you with what you need to be able to do those things, to provide you with the resources, the guidance, the the teaching, the environments, the spaces uh, for you to grow in your love for God, your love for one another, and your love for the people around you. So this morning, the the, the sermon's going to be a little different than normal. I I said to someone this morning, I said it's kind of the sermon this morning is sort of like extended announcements. (laughs) But I just want to share with you um, and highlight a few of the ways that we're, we're trying to help you be able to do these things. Uh, and invite you and encourage you to take advantage of these opportunities, to take a next step in your walk with God. So first of all, this upward uh, love God thing that we're trying to help you be able to do, how are we uh, creating space for you to grow in your love for God? At the core of the Christian life is not religion, it's relationship. When we're saved by grace through faith in Christ, we enter into a relationship with God. And like every relationship, Our relationship with God needs time and attention to be healthy. Sunday services, Sunday mornings here are one of those spaces, those spaces that uh, we've created to give you time and attention to that relationship with God as we practice corporate prayer, uh, corporate worship, and as we spend time exploring God's word together. Sundays are a valuable piece in your walk with God. And I want to share about a few of the things that I have planned, uh, some of the sermons that are cooking uh, in, in the slow cooker as, as we get ready to you know, launch into the, this fall. <clears throat> and um, I've got a, a couple of series that are, are, um, are in the works. So later this fall, uh, one of the, the teaching series that I'm going to be doing is called The Parables of Jesus. Parables, the stories Jesus told. So I've always wanted to, to uh, preach on the parables, I've thought about it from time to time. Uh, the parables are, are actually pretty challenging. Uh, you think, well, these are simple little illustrations that even a child can understand. Yes, on one, on one hand, but at the other hand, boy, they can be very deep and very interesting and uh, sometimes confusing. And so I am really excited to dig into some parables with you, some of the stories that Jesus told and, and help us understand what Jesus was getting at and what it means to be kingdom people. So, that's coming up later this fall. In the new year, I'm actually going to be teaching through the book of Leviticus. Now, you might be thinking, Leviticus? Isn't that like the most boring part of the Bible? Yes, it is. (laughs) But, oh man, it's a gold mine. And, And maybe you've avoided that book because it's all about, you know, sacrificing lambs and and all sorts of weird things. Um, 
And you might think, that has nothing to do with my life today. But wow, what the book of Leviticus, how it shows us and points us to Jesus is really remarkable. And I think it's going to... um, It's really going to increase uh, your appreciation for Christ, uh, your love for Jesus and what he's done for you, and your understanding of the layers of what he accomplished for us on the cross. So that's the book of Leviticus. Invite your friends. Tell them the pastor's preaching on Leviticus. You got to come. That's in the new year. Um, Several other themes and ideas I'm working on uh, as well. I'm not going to reveal those yet, but uh, uh, there's some other things coming up. Plus, we have some guest speakers on September 24th. Renee McVicker, our new executive minister of our denomination, will be here. And so we're really excited to hear from her. She's fantastic. On October the 15th, we also have Christy Penner Warden coming. Uh, You're thinking, who is her? uh, Who is she? And I'm thinking, I have no idea because I've never met her either. But she's going to be here speaking the day before at the next conference that the CBAC is, is holding here at Emmanuel, which is a children's ministry conference. And she is a speaker uh, and author in the area of children's ministry. And she's going to be preaching here on the 15th of October. And my impression of her from everything I've seen is that she's full of spunk. So I think it's going to be a fun Sunday. Now, Sundays are just one way that we give time and attention to our relationship with God. Obviously, if you're only doing Sunday mornings as your like, only thing that you do in your Christian walk, uh, you're, you're not going to grow very much. That would be like eating one meal a week and expecting to be healthy, physically, and strong. No, you can't do that. you got to eat every day. got to have that daily intake of healthy nutrients. And it's the same thing in our spiritual life. We have to have a daily walk with God. And so we are encouraging uh, you uh, to continue uh, in daily spiritual habits like Bible reading, prayer, and others. A couple of years ago, I started a sermon series called Habits. Uh, You might remember that. And uh, the pickle thing will make sense if you go back and listen to the first message Uh, in that series. Um, But we're going to continue that this year as well. We're going to be continuing to hit on uh, some of the spiritual disciplines and helping you understand what that is and giving you opportunities uh, to practice those things and maybe create spaces and resources for you to put some spiritual disciplines into practice, uh, like at occasional uh, prayer and worship nights that that are coming up. And since growing as a disciple of Jesus rarely happens on your own, Uh, This year, the elders are also exploring ideas around one-on-one discipleship and what that might look like, such as pairing up a mature believer with uh, someone who's newer to the faith in a long-term mentoring relationship. So we're we're cooking that up too. So all of these things and more are, are part of our desire to help you become a fully devoted follower of Jesus who loves God with all your heart and soul, mind, and strength. We're also called to love one another. As a church family, we're supposed to be family, right? We want everyone who attends our church to feel like part of the family, to be seen, heard, and cared for. That's our vision. We recognize that we haven't always achieved that perfectly, uh, but we're helping to make that vision a reality by creating environments where you can build meaningful relationships with others in the church. That might be fellowship opportunities when they're available, like coffee and conversation after the service. I know some people, the service is over and they head for the door as fast as they possibly can. And, and I know you got stuff on the go or whatever, but if you can stay and have those conversations, that's so important. We create that space on purpose uh, for relationship. And when we have things happening, like picnics and baseball games, uh, here's a picture from when we, in, in softball, thank you. Uh, uh, here's from our July softball game. Uh, there's the lineup. Um, and we're doing stuff like that. Show up, even if you, even if you, uh, you don't play or, or you don't, just come and, and your presence is an encouragement. Friday Night Fill Up is starting up again this month. Uh, this was uh, something we started last year and really was popular and uh, I enjoy. It's one of my highlights of the month um, where we have a potluck downstairs in the youth area and, uh, and everyone is welcome, and it's a chance to connect, to get to know people, especially uh, if you're new to the church. It's, it's a way for you to kind of get to know people and, and for the people who are, who've been here for a while to get to know you if you're new. So uh, Friday Night Phillips are, are starting up again. Um, and what's also really, really important is that you're part of a small group of some sort in the church, like whether that's a Bible study or home church 
Um, ladies' morning out is restarting. Uh, that's Tuesday morning, so this is for uh, women. Tuesday mornings, 9.30, starting on Tuesday the 19th. So a couple weeks uh, from now. Uh, not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. Um, ladies' morning out is starting up again here at the church. Men, there's a once-a-month men's breakfast at Smitty's. Uh, usually the first Monday, but it's actually happening tomorrow um, on the 11th uh, this month. This is, a, this is great, especially for the, those uh, retired guys or, uh, or men with flexible work schedules. Um, so men, there's an opportunity for you to connect. I mentioned home church. Uh, home churches are, are key, key to our church. This is, they're really important. And I gotta say, we don't have enough home churches. We've got a faithful few who are, who are leading home churches. <clears throat> and we're so thankful for you if you're one of those faithful few. But we have people who want to be part of home church and there's not space for them. And that's a problem. That's a real problem. We need to create more groups. So if, you've, if you have a home, <laughs> and most people here do, I think. I would probably dare say everyone here has a home. Uh, you may be uh, eligible for being a home church host. Um, uh, so please consider, could I open up my home once a week or once every couple of weeks for a group in my home? It doesn't mean you have to lead. Maybe you're thinking, well, I don't know how to lead a Bible study or lead discussion or pray out loud. That scares me. But I've got space. Be a host. And, and maybe you find a friend, or, or we can find someone for you who might be able to lead. Maybe someone who's got the leadership ability, but they go, my house is crazy. You don't want to be in my house. I got five kids. <laughs> you know, my house is a disaster. You know, that's me. Um, <laughs> you know? Um, but you think, you, I got the skills to lead. A, you know, I could lead some discussion, or I can pray out loud. Uh, maybe you could be a leader, and someone else can host. Or maybe you can do both. Whatever. But if you're interested, we, we, I was hoping that we could get home churches, like, launched, like, today, but it was just, we're not ready. We need more people. Uh, but home churches are so valuable. This is an opportunity for you to, to get together in circles. You know, on Sundays, we're in rows, right? We're all facing the same direction, and, 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 you, and you're watching what happens up here. And, and, and that's good, right? As we've already talked about, Sunday mornings are important. But I think that really, when we really start to grow when we get into circles. We face each other, and we can be seen and heard and contribute and, um, and that's what happens in home churches. They're really designed for care and relationship. That's the primary goal. So, uh, so yeah, if you're interested at all, come and talk to me. We can work it out. That's a Beatles song, isn't it? We can work it out. So stay tuned for registration and all that. Um, also, here's another thing. There's a growing number of young adults in our church. Praise God. Isn't that exciting? We have young adults. a lot of churches you go into when the youngest person is like 60 years old. Um, we're thankful that we have a growing number. We've got about 20 people uh, in our church now between ages 18 to 30, which is, which is cool. And so we're starting a young adult Bible study. Uh, we, we feel this is really important that we don't, we don't lose this generation. So we want to we connect with you. If you are in that age group, 18 to 30, that sort of college and career zone, um, once a month we're going to start with that. Uh, once a month on a Sunday after church, the third Sunday of the month, uh, so that'll be like next week, the 17th, uh, come on down to the youth center, we'll, we'll feed you. I know that's when you're a young adult, like that's a big thing, right? Like especially if you're a college student, like oh someone's going to feed me, okay I'm there. Um, come down to the youth center after the service, we'll feed you and then we'll just open the Bible together and, and, and grow together and, and pray for one another and all that kind of cool stuff and learn about what's going on in each other's lives. Um, and then uh, we'll go from there. I mean, we'll start once a month. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be leading it. And, uh, and, and maybe uh, someone in the group says, hey, we should do this every other week. Great. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But anyway, we'll start next Sunday. So if you're in that age range, you are welcome. So those are some of the avenues for you to grow in your love for one another. And the elders are continuing to work on this, especially on how we make sure that everyone in our church is able to receive spiritual care and practical care through the church body when they need it. And, and if you read Norm's uh, elders update yesterday, you saw a little hint at what we're thinking about, um, sort of neighborhood-based uh, care teams. And, and, and so we're working on that. Um, so stay tuned about that too. But I know for me, let me just share this personally. When I was growing up as a boy and then as a, as a young adult, as a teen and so on, um, church was a place of belonging for me. It was a place where people knew my name, 
and took interest in me. It was a safe place where I was encouraged and supported and given opportunities to use my gifts uh, for the kingdom of God. Essentially, I felt loved by my church family. And I think that a big part of the reason that I am serving the Lord today at all, like that I am still following Christ, but also that I have committed my whole life to serving the church as a pastor, uh, is because I know firsthand what it is to be loved by a church family. And I hope that that's your experience here too uh, at Emmanuel. I want that to be true for every person who considers themselves a part of our church family. Jesus said, love each other in the same way that I have loved you. He also wants us to extend our love beyond our holy huddles to the world around us. Love the world around us. I think if there's anything I'm most excited to share with other people uh, when they ask me about my church are the ways that we are doing our best to show our love to the people in our community. Whether that's our community care ministry, which is we already, which Norm already shared about, our help ministry, uh, Atlantic Baptist Women, uh, the Love Your Neighbor Day, the Christmas Index, uh, New Parents Baskets, our Step Lebanon Partnership, uh, our support for Trey, helping women right here in our community who are recovering victims of human trafficking, uh, or Camp Peguiac, or, or Archway Christian Counseling, or the Canadian Food Grains Bank, or Canadian Baptist uh, Ministries Partners in Mission, or our Refugee Ministries. <laughs> like, this is, like, it's, it's really when you think about it, like, we are, we're punching above our weight, folks. Um, there are multiple things that, that God has called us to do as a church, and you have faithfully stepped up time and time again to help us see these things happen. Thank you. Uh, God is good. Um, there are multiple opportunities uh, for you to get involved in, in compassionate gospel mission ministry to our neighbors and to our world. And we're on the lookout always for new ways, uh, new ways to serve and be a blessing. We're exploring, for example, how we can respond to the housing crisis in Truro. We've been talking about that. We're exploring how we can use our resources like this incredible building that God has blessed us with uh, to respond to other needs in our community. Uh, We're keeping our eyes open and our hands and feet ready. We're saying, Lord, whatever you want to do, we're ready. Simply put, we want to be a blessing to our neighbors. We want to love our neighbors. We want the love that we show to the world around us to be significant and impactful. And when people outside these walls observe what we're doing here, we want them to see love coming out of every pore. We don't want all this effort of being a manual Baptist church to end up being a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. We don't want to just be busy up here making noise. We want to be harmoniously playing from the sheet music of Christ's love. If we are doing all those things effectively, loving God, loving one another, loving the world around us, then I believe we will be, we'll succeed in our mission, which is to help people encounter and follow Jesus. That's the big why, right? The vision is like the what, and the mission is the why. So the vision is, hey, let's, let's love God with all our hearts, and let's love one another really, really well, and let's love the world around us. Why? Why do all that? So that we can help people encounter and follow Jesus. So that people who are far from Jesus will encounter Jesus through us. And that those who've encountered him will choose to follow him. And those who choose to follow him will choose to follow him wholeheartedly. Jesus said in John chapter 4, he says, wake up and look around. Wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. And he says they, the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. Wake up and look around. The fields are ripe. People are ready. There is a hunger. There's a growing hunger for the Lord. Uh, this, 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 just this week, uh, we, Hannah and I, Pastor Hannah and I were on a Zoom call uh, for, in preparation of our trip to Lebanon, and we were meeting with all the other Canadians that are going on the trip. I, there's like seven or eight of us that are going to Lebanon. Um, and one of the people on the call was a, a pastor from Toronto, Emmanuel Baptist Church Toronto, 
I said to him, I said, oh, you're at Emmanuel at the big T dot, and I'm at Emmanuel at the little T dot. <laughs> but uh, he's going to be my roommate when, I, when we're in Lebanon. And, uh, and he shared with us that God is doing something really exciting right now in Toronto, um, that there is a huge number of people from predominantly Muslim countries who, are, who have immigrated to Toronto and are, and are turning to and trusting in Christ as their savior. Uh, he said that there, the, the Muslims have put their faith in Christ, the, the number that he's encountering, in fact, they've started a, a congregation, a separate congregation in their church that is just ministering to these people. Um, he said last week he personally baptized 99 of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The Spirit of God is on the move, folks. And if it can happen in big T dot, it can happen in little T dot. It's happening around the world. It's happening right here in Canada. Wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. There's an awakening happening. It's a revival of some sort. I'm not sure what it is exactly. I'll let the the, the religion sociologist people, uh, the scholars, figure that out and, put, and define it. But I want to be certain that whatever it is that is happening right now, that the Spirit of God is up to, that we're a part of it. Because the need for people to encounter and follow Jesus is greater than ever. People are struggling. I don't know if you've noticed that, but I certainly have. Man, there's a whole, just this cloud over society right now. People are struggling. People are hurting. They're looking for hope. They're looking for answers. They're looking for real love and relationship. They're looking for something that has meaning, eternal meaning, not just something, you know, a fleeting TikTok trend or something. You know, they're, they're looking for something that will change their life. And what Jesus offers is everything they're looking for. Everything you're looking for. My, my favorite verse in the Bible. Yes, I, I picked a favorite at some point a few years ago. I said, I think this is my favorite verse. And it's a simple little verse, but wow, I love it. It's so impactful. And it's 1 John 5, 12. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. If you have the Son of God... If you belong to Jesus, if you've been saved and born again by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ, you have life. That's eternal life. That's abundant life. <laughs> that's, that's the life you've always wanted. That's the life that everyone has been searching for. You have it in Jesus, and it never ends. When you close your eyes in death, that life just keeps on going. Jesus is light and life in a dark and dying world. We have a vision. I hope you'll catch it. It's to be a Jesus-centered community learning to love God, one another, and the world around us. It's to be driven and defined by love in all that we do. Why? In order to fulfill our mission, to help people encounter and follow Jesus. I hope you'll join us and engage with us in this mission. Will you stand for prayer?